Hey everyone, I'm Mandy. Thank you for being here. In today's video, I'm going to share with you five objection handling techniques that I use when making my daily dials. Let's face it, when you call people nine times out of 10, you're going to face objections from sellers. It's just inevitable and it's okay. As long as you have your techniques and your little tool bag as to how to navigate these conversations, you'll get through them effortlessly, but you just have to be prepared and you have to role play them. And once you do that and internalize them, it will become more and more easier to handle these objections as they're thrown your way. Number one, we already have an agent. Now, if this is a, an expired, I say, well, are you going with the agent that you were previously listed with? And if they say yes, I'll say, okay. Are they gonna do things a little bit differently this time? Have they explained maybe a new strategy? I just kind of pry a little bit. In so doing, I'm actually saying to them, okay, you're using the same person you used before. How do you expect different results if it's the same person? And again, I'm never coming at them in a hostile way. I actually am genuinely probing to see what they're gonna do differently. And a lot of times they'll say, well, you know, it was slow during the summer, we're gonna try again in the fall. I say, okay, great, you know, best of luck to you. I I really don't push too much with objections depending upon what they are and the circumstances are surrounding. But I always kind of try to get in there a little bit because that's that's my job and doing so helps a lot. But you, you want to do so respectfully. Now if they're a FISBO and they say they have an agent that they're going to use, I'll just ask questions. You know, did somebody else use them? How do you know about them? And if they say, oh, it's, it's a friend of the family's, I'll say, excellent. Now are they selling full time or is this something they do on a part-time basis? I'm trying to qualify them for the seller. It's a little nosy, it's a little intrusive, but again, I am trying to locate an opportunity here and I am also trying to show my value or my team's value in this situation. And I think these, these questions are legitimate as long as they're asked respectfully. If they say, well, it is a family member, and this is kind of like a worst case scenario because you don't want to have to do this, but it's okay if you do it because business is business. I always say, well, if you feel obligated to work with them, we can always offer a referral fee to them you know, the 25% standard industry referral fee. So that's an option to kind of get around that. But you just want to probe and find out who this agent is, what value they bring to the table, and if there's any other value that you might have over them that you can convince the person to at least meet with you. And one other thing. Now, if they've firmly established that they are going with this other agent, that is fine. That is your opportunity to back away. But in backing away, always see if you can get the email address. And this is the way I would handle this objection here. I would say, well, you know what? I understand you wanna use your neighbor's daughter, but having been in this industry for a while now, I do know that agents come and go. I will be here in this market for years to come. We'd love to be a backup in case anything changes with regards to your relationship with that agent. Is there any chance I can get your email address? And if they say no, thank you, then you just back out politely and you keep dialing. Objection number two, we don't trust brokers. You usually get this objection, well you can get it with an expire, but you usually get it with a for sale by owner or FISBO and that's why they are for sale by owner. They may have had a bad experience with a broker in the past and that experience is, is still with them to this day and there's no way they're gonna trust another broker, which I totally get. But a way to counter that would be, can I ask you a question, Ms. Jones? If you were to see a doctor and you had a bad experience with this doctor, would you stop seeing doctors in general? Just because you had an experience with one professional in an industry doesn't mean that you're going to have that same experience with other professionals in the industry. And I think when you use that doctor example, we all know the importance of having a doctor in our lives, I think that that kind of conveys that. I like to say everyone's different, there's good and bad people in every profession. I like to apologize to them too, that they've had a bad experience and just say, I understand there are some not so nice people in this industry and I've encountered them myself, which is true. But just know that not everybody is that way and if there's anything that we can do to help you, we'd love to earn your trust and maybe your business one day. Respect that objection, acknowledge it, empathize with it, and then give them that little doctor example and see where it goes. Objection number three. Now this is for the inside sales agents out there. This is who I'm speaking to directly with this one. Why are you calling me? If you're not the agent, why isn't your agent calling me or your broker? 
I only want to speak to the person that would be selling my property. But this is what I tell them in reply. I say, well, because my broker, once they secure a listing, they're out trying to sell it. They don't have time to prospect anymore. And would you want someone that you've hired to sell your home to be out prospecting for new business when they already have your home to sell? That's pretty much an easy one to overcome. I remember having a gentleman say that to me on the phone. And when I gave him my reason, he was like, huh, makes sense. He ended up meeting with my agent. We didn't get the listing, but I mean, when you think about it, it really does make a lot of sense. Now, if you're a new agent and you're prospecting, that's okay. You can kind of veer differently with the conversation. But if you are the inside sales agent, just say, listen, my agent's out hustling. They've got sellers they're working hard for. That's why I'm here. I'm here to convey how great they are, the value that they offer, and you should consider working with us. Number four, we don't want to pay an agent a commission. That's why we're selling it on our own. Well, there's only one thing you can do with this objection is you have to empathize with them and you have to tell them, yeah, I understand. I get it. I also don't want to pay more for something that I need to. And if you think you can sell it on your own, go for it. Give it a chance. But you don't just walk away from the call there. You start talking to them as a partner and you start looking at their listing. I start looking at the photographs that they ha have and I say, oh, you know what? Your photographs are okay. Have you considered using a professional photographer? And I'm always honest with my feedback guys. I'm not going to say that if they have like awesome photos, but I start looking at the potential weaknesses in the listing, things that could really detract a buyer from approaching them as a for sale by owner. Do they have good photos? Do they have a floor plan? I point that out to them in a genuine effort to help them and empower them to sell on their own. I also remind them what days on market is all about and that the longer a property sits on the market, that is going to encourage lower offers. They might not be aware of that if they haven't sold before or maybe they, they sold years ago, but this current market is different and I want to give you guys every competitive advantage. You know, there's a lot of options out there for buyers. They're going to click on the one that grabs their attention. Make sure that you get that couple of seconds with them and you, you grab their attention. They click on your, your property and they want to learn more. Make sure that you're priced properly. Have you, how did you arrive at your pricing? And you know, kind of, kind of work with them now. Okay. You're going to sell on your own. You don't want to pay commission. Great. Now I'm on your team. What can I do to help you? And as you kind of have that just candid conversation with them, trying to be their partner, they start to open up more with you. And then you can kind of ask them for a property preview. I work with buyers in your area. I'd love to come by and see the home in person. We all know that meeting with the seller in person is a greater way to bond with them, connect with them, build rapport. See if you can get in with just the property preview. I just want to see it in case I know of anyone that wants to buy it. So you can get away from the commission conversation and just talk about helping them because once you can get in there and show your value, they might consider you or you can say, you know, what? give it a try for a few weeks. Is it okay if I check back with you in a few weeks to see how things are going? Nine times out of 10, they say, yeah, okay, that's fine. But you keep your eye on that property, especially if it's a neighborhood or building that you really want to get into. Somebody is going to get to them and you want to stay with that person. Commission won't be a factor after a while when you, they start struggling and they'll realize the value that paying a commission is all about. If they ask you what your rate is on the phone, I give them a range of what my agent or my team's uh, commission rates are. I say, if we can see the property in person, we can give you a better idea as to what our rates would be but we need to see it from a buyer's perspective we have to look at the product so just talk to them don't don't fight with them you're always in agreement with them you're showing empathy you're staying positive and you're trying to convey your value and then before you know it the commission objection goes away and they might consider you down the road but if they are on their own they could be hurting themselves in the long run and it might not cost them as much to work with you as that you think so if you do get that property preview you can kind of break down some numbers with them there Objection number five. Well, you haven't sold in this neighborhood before, have you? And if you haven't sold in the neighborhood, you got to be honest. If you tell them, well, no, I haven't, they might just say, well, no, we're, we're only interested in somebody who sold in our neighborhood. And then you politely tell them real estate happens online. Real estate is all about exposure. 
How many eyes can you get on the property? Do you know how to leverage your marketing? Do you know how to target market? Do you know how to mass market? There's a lot that goes into selling a property. And we sell properties all the time that we've never sold in maybe a specific neighborhood, or, but there's a first for everything. And as long as you know how to sell, you can sell any area now. Real estate is on the internet. It's, you don't have to live in a neighborhood in order to be able to sell it. And even if you haven't sold in that neighborhood, you can familiarize yourself with it and get as many people in the door that's something that you are looking for when you hire an agent who is going to get me maximum exposure because the higher the traffic the higher the chances are of getting offers the more offers you have the greater likelihood you're going to get the offer that you want it's all about exposure and if we've sold before we can certainly sell again because we know the process involved Thanks for being here, everyone. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If so, please feel free to leave me a thumbs up down below and drop me a comment. New videos coming your way every week. Take care.